Today I'll show you some of the features of my Ultimate Hamster Tracker Wheel. I will show you how to build this and please check the description for more information on how to build it via instructable.com. I made an uncommon choice for a college student. I got a pet hamster as a roommate. It ran so much during the night that it kept me awake. So lying awake at night, I asked myself the following questions. How far can this hamster run in just one night? Where can I get a silent wheel? I wonder what I could do with that embed stored in my closet right now. The answer to these questions became a fun project to keep me busy in my spare time. I started by creating a SOLIDWORKS model of this wheel here. The fundamental components to this wheel are two skateboard ball bearings on either side for silent operation. There's also a hidden reed switch here that has a wire coming off it leading to this embed. Here I wrote C++ code that will log the data and display it on this LCD screen so you can keep track of your hamster. Let's take a closer look at this display. The speed will update in real time. Everything else will update in a 24 hour block. So every 24 hours it will record the number of revolutions and convert that into a distance which is called recent. This is uh, added together in a five day running average which is displayed under average and the percentage change from recent to the average value uh, will be displayed uh, either in red or green, depending on if it's been an increase or decrease on the average. At the bottom here, we have the highest and lowest score, which is your hamster has ever recorded. You'll know that this has been updated because there'll be some text at the bottom to warn you. As I said, it operates in a 24 hour block. So in the bottom left there, It'll show what hour it is out of the 24 hour block and also the number of days that it's been operating. Uh, keep in mind this will reset every time you unplug it and plug it back in. There's no storage currently set up. This guide assumes you have experience with laser cutting, the embed microcontroller, and also breadboard wiring and soldering. Most electrical and computer engineering students will have these skills and most determined makers will also have them. As an electrical engineering student, I was able to complete this project for an additional $40. What will you need for this project? You will need an embed, this LCD, the breadboard with jumper cables, a reed switch, three birch plywood sheets that are 1 8 inch, 12 by 24 inches, two skateboard ball bearings, one bolt, four washers, five nuts, uh, two magnetic washers, and a screw and nut to match that. Spare wire or broken headphones as I have here. You also need some tools including two wrenches, uh, one short wrench, a Phillips head screwdriver, and one soldering iron. I used a really cheap $15 30 watt iron. I do not recommend that. Uh, of course you also need access to a laser cutter. If you have any concerns about these materials, please check the link again in the description for my instructable page. Assuming you're able to laser cut all these parts successfully, next you'll need to glue the wheel and the base together. And then you'll assemble them with these nuts and bolts later. I recommend you have a friend for these steps if possible. It's difficult to line everything up and hold them in place perfectly without an extra hand. Before you assemble it, if you would like to add any paint or sand down these edges, I highly recommend you do that before gluing anything together. The construction of this is not too difficult. It's a fairly easy puzzle. I'll show you some close-ups and that'll help you put it together yourself. Now that you have the wheel constructed and the base constructed, you'll need to attach them. So I get your bolt here. I put the head on this side and you'll just need to slowly add the nuts and washers in all the right places and slowly thread it in until it all lines up beautifully. So the order you're looking for is the bolt head, washer, wood, washer, nut, bearing, nut, uh, some free space, another nut, bearing, nut, washer, these three wood pieces where the reed switch is located, another washer, and finally the last nut. Uh, in this design here, I'm using a bolt that is too long. I'll have that corrected in the list of materials. One last thing to add is the magnet here. So I decided to use 
a small bolt and nut to attach these washer shaped magnets so that they would not be messed with. I also added a little bit of glue there so they wouldn't wiggle loose. So the next challenge is hooking up this reed switch in a way that you get consistent detection of the wheel rotating. I'll show you this deconstructed. Uh, basically there are three ports on the reed switch. You'll need to maybe use a multimeter or trial and error to detect which two you'll need. Basically you need the condition where most of the time when the wheel is rotating, the switch is open and only for a little while as the magnet passes, the switch is closed, allowing the current to flow. And it'll be a, uh, like a Boolean value on for the embed. I chose to sacrifice a pair of old headphones to this project because it'll allow me to disconnect the wheel from the embed so I can store them or carry them separately. If you're planning on doing this, I have instructions in the Instructable. Uh, just keep in mind I'm actually using four wires for a job that only needs two wires, just so it looks a bit complicated for no reason. Ultimately, you just need to make sure that one end of the reed switch connects to ground and the other connects to pin 24 on your embed. Now that you're happy with the wiring, you need to position the reed switch in a way that will allow consistent detection of the magnet. I found that the reed switch detects most consistently when positioned around here. You'll know it when you have the correct reed switch placement when it sounds like this. Now let's take a closer look at the embed. So here's a close-up shot of the wiring I have going on here. Most of these components here are not needed. The only ones you need are the LCD screen, the embed itself, some interface for the reed switch. Here I have the headphone jack. And if we really want, you can use this shift bright to show a status indicator, but that's not necessary. So next you'll need to get the code I wrote in C++. So I use the embed compiler online. Uh, I made the code available for you to create a project out of and compile for your specific embed model. If you follow the pinning that I've shown here in the close up, the code will run correctly without any changes. If you know what you're doing, you could edit the code to match your current breadboard setup if you would like. So now all you need to do is plug it in and it should be operational. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about hamster safety. So this design I made works for my hamster pretty well. I have this previous design for the base that my hamster did not get along with. Uh, my hamster really likes to climb things and this was uh, an invitation to climb and get himself stuck in the hamster wheel. So unfortunately I've, I was there to watch it and we quickly made the change to this wheel. The reason I say this it's because I recommend you watch your hamster very closely when you first put the wheel in there because this wheel design may not work very well for your hamster. Another point is I use birch wood here because it is food safe for humans and also hamsters. Uh, do not use any like, pine or cedar based wood because that contains oils that will make your hamster quite sick. Uh, I'd also recommend using some kind of acrylic. That's something that I'll try in the future. One last note about hamster safety. Uh, I know someone's probably thinking, why would you have electricity so close to your hamster? Uh, that's a good point. I designed this wheel so that the reed switch and most of the wire is hidden away from the hamster. When I first was making this, I had this bolt which was way too long than I really needed. My hamster used this as a foothold to step up and nibble off this wire. He was fine. I made a change so that this is not gonna be an issue for you. So what's the future of this project? So I have many more ideas that I haven't gotten the chance to implement here yet. Uh, the main one is the ability to store this data onto an SD card and also to store it in a granularity much higher than 24 hours. Uh, so this is definitely possible, I just haven't set it up. So one of the results of this is you can see something like a normal distribution of your hamster's activity with a window instead of 24 hours, something like 10 minutes or even five minutes. This would be really cool to see your hamster's activity throughout the night. I'd also like to implement some kind of mode for the display so that you could change what's being displayed here 
and maybe show something like a graph and other data which you could swap with the push of a button. And additionally, one last change may be to the wheel itself. This one I'm fairly happy with. I would like to make it out of something like acrylic so that it's easier to clean. I'm sure there are many improvements that could be made to the overall design. Please feel free to try this project for yourself. You can edit the design and repost it under your own name. Just please uh, credit me and send me the link so I can check it out. If you have any further suggestions for this project, please leave a comment below. Thank you.